Welcome everyone, the day has finally come and the gameplay overview trailer for Space Marine 2 was released and boy oh boy is there a lot to unpack here. Learned a lot more about the classes in this game and the ultimate abilities each of these classes have which we will touch on in just a little bit. Overall, this trailer did its job and that I am much more excited to jump into the game and it left me wanting more. Specifically excited to see this swarm technology in action and just how much they can push its limitations. This tech was used in their previous game World War Z and it seemed to have pretty positive reception in that game so it should be a good time that offers us hundreds of Tyranids to slaughter. I also would not be surprised if the Tyranids climbed on top of each other to form pyramids so they could reach where we are. Monster variety and repetition of killing the same monsters may be a valid concern here though and how will the game run with hundreds of enemies on the screen? I'm optimistic that it will run pretty smooth although only time will tell. The story starts off as Titus being demoted and we as the player instantly feel a bit of frustration for this character and makes us wonder what Titus has been doing in the meantime. So going out and slaughtering hundreds of Tyranids to prove ourselves is an excellent way to blow off some steam. Hopefully in doing that, we will uncover the mysterious past of Titus as well. We know he was in prison for a long time and then became a black shield for the Death Watch. Maybe we can get some flashbacks of his time with the Death Watch, or at the very least, maybe the game will open up with a cutscene showcasing his imprisonment and his time with the Death Watch that would eventually lead to his return to the Ultramarines. All this taking place on the Imperial Jungle World of Kadaku, Titus and his battle brothers will be fighting alongside the Astra Militarum regiments of the Kadian Shock Troopers to aid this jungle. Also takes place on the high world of Avarox and Demirium, which I was unable to find any reliable sources as to what Demirium is like. I'm pretty sure this is where we encounter the Thousand Suns. The planet looks similar to the Thousand Suns tease we got in the extended gameplay trailer back in August of 2023. If anyone knows or has any guesses, leave them in the comments below. I'm interested to see what you all think. After each mission, we will go to the HQ in space where we can gather info about our next mission and do some upgrades and customize our weapons, abilities, and gear. I was getting some Helldivers 2 vibes with this HQ. You can also see here that we get two rewards for completing an Operation XP and Armory data. If we freeze frame here, we can definitely see that this is indeed a member of the Thousand Suns on the planet Demirium which is why I think Demirium is indeed the planet in which we will encounter them. Obviously, this is an over-the-shoulder third-person shooter similar to Gears of War. The core combat loop looks to be using a mixture of ranged melee combat. Basically, use your weapon of choice at range, and then when your armor is getting low, you can run in, do some wicked melee executions to regain that armor, in which you can then return back to ranged combat until you need to replenish your armor again. I would imagine once that armor is depleted, you will take increased flesh damage, which will deplete the red health bar quicker. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there are abilities you can unlock that will allow you to play more of a peer ranged character. Maybe the sniper class will have an ability where if you finish the enemy with a headshot, for example, you regain some armor. That would definitely be cool to see. So we can see here the operations mode will have a quick match so you can jump into battle with other players. There appears to only be six operations. Hopefully it's not just six as that could get pretty repetitive very fast. I think it's probably just six operations displayed, but there are a bunch more and say that when you complete an operation, this list will change to a new set of six operations to choose from. We get a brief overview of the mission and its objectives. And again, we see here that we earn XP and armory data for completing a mission. Here we can see there is an armoring hall where we can select our class. There's some neat class portrait art here, and we can actually see the description for assault, death from above, an assault space marine crushes their foes with devastating melee blows perfectly timed to ensure victory so melee boys there you go use that two-handed hammer baby we also see the vanguard's description infiltrator a vanguard space marine specializes in liquidating vital targets in furious close range combat those of you looking to use the flamethrower and the melter rifle vanguard's for you we get a look at the sniper rifle here cool scope and animations we can see here in the armoring hall, we can select any of the six classes and edit up to three loadouts, each class wielding their own unique set of weapons. Additionally, there's a per tree we can dump points in to get better abilities. There's also an armor class. Not too sure what other gameplay impacts this will have besides the class having more or less armor. Maybe tier three armor will move slower. It would make sense for the sniper to move quicker than say the heavy class. Looks like each class gets their own ultimate ability. This game refers to that as signature. For the heavy, it's the iron halo, which creates a powerful barrier blocking all ranged damage. Now you may be wondering if each class has multiple ultimates to choose from or if it's just one. Unfortunately, it does look like each class has only one signature, 
but there are enhancement perks for that signature that you will unlock as you level your character up. Hopefully these enhancements are pretty significant as that would add to the replayability and just help the game remain feeling new and fresh as you level. Now I could be completely wrong. Maybe you can select that signature icon and swap it out with a different signature. I don't think so, but that very well could be the case. What we can determine from this is that there are core class perks team perks such as proven efficiency all squad members deal 50 percent more gun strike damage gear perks and then the signature or ultimate perks we will use armory data to unlock and upgrade class perks there appears to be four weapon tiers which are standard master crafted artificer and lastly relic the way weapon upgrades work is you use the weapon in combat and this earns you xp for that weapon once you earn enough xp for that weapon you can spend materials, in this case, one green material to upgrade that weapon to Master Crafted. This gives you a mastery point, which you can use to add perks to the weapon. In this case, they gave their weapon the fast reload perk. As to where you get these materials, well, possibly like Helldivers 2, you go explore the world during your mission and find them in all sorts of places. The harder the mission, the more and rarer ones you find. The melee class assault has a jump pack ultimate, which enables enhanced dashes and powerful jumps, resulting in new combat moves. We saw that with the ground slam earlier in the trailer, Assault is also a tier 3 armor class, and they have that Thunder Hammer, which makes it very enticing to me. We already knew this one, but I'll throw it in here anyways. The Sniper's ultimate is the Camo Cloak. And another new one was confirmed in this trailer. The Vanguard's ultimate is the Grapnel Launcher. It allows you to propel to an enemy and then perform a diving kick. Both Vanguard and Sniper are tier 2 armor classes. Another tier 3 armor class was shown off, the Bulwark, which has the Chapter Banner ultimate that restores armor to all squad members in the area of effect. And to be honest, this is probably the one I'm going to be playing. This guy looks badass. There's also something called Trials. Unsure on what this is. Seems intriguing enough though. If anyone has a hunch, leave a comment. I would love to hear what you guys think. Maybe it's a way to test your abilities and see how good your build is. That'd be pretty sweet. Like maybe it's like a firing range of some sorts. I don't know. Just a guess. Also, each class has its own individual level. I don't mind having to play and level multiple classes. That's actually pretty fun to me and it helps ease me into the class and abilities so I can actually learn the class efficiently. I just hope they found the right mixture of leveling time here. I would bet that they did though because this game already confirmed no microtransactions and that the only DLC would be cosmetic only. So there's really no need to make the leveling time obnoxiously long because they won't be trying to sell us XP boost or anything of that nature. Boy oh boy, it looks like there is a lot of customization in this game. From armor sets to space marine chapters to being able to customize your space marine from head to toe, it looks robust and plentiful to me. There's even an emblem editor where you can create multiple emblems and place them on your helm, backpack, breastplate, left and right shoulders, and limbs. I'm excited to jump in here and customize some space marines. Let me know what chapters you are hoping to see in the armoring hall. We got some new gameplay footage of the PvP mode Eternal War in this trailer. They teased the three modes some more, Annihilation, which is their team deathmatch, Seize Ground, which looks to be a variant of King of the Hill, and Capture and Control, which is probably similar to Domination from titles like Call of Duty. Overall, this is giving me Xbox 360 vibes with Romp Gears of War style plus hordes and melee gameplay. Oh baby, it's looking good. The environment artists are absolutely talented for the stunning details they put in. Let me know what you guys think about the perks and ultimates. Do you think that there is just one ultimate perk per class or is there multiple? The trailer mentioned more surprises to be revealed to us very soon. So be sure to subscribe as I will be covering any significant details we learn about this game as it nears closer and closer to the September 9th launch date. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. There was a lot of new stuff to unpack from this gameplay overview trailer. Without dense and substantial the Warhammer 40k lore is, I'm sure there was something that slipped my analysis here. Feel free to share your thoughts, predictions, and any Easter eggs I maybe didn't pick up on in the comment section below. Anyways, take excellent care of yourselves and goodbye!